it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today I am here showing off a lovely blanket. Look at this, look at the colours first of all but also look at this fabulous way of using this particular stitch. So I have to say this blanket I did not make myself. No, this is a collaboration with Karen. Karen is one of our moderators and one day she popped in and she saw, she lives close to me, she saw the new range of the Aran Starcraft that we have in our stock now. And she was like, oh, Anya, I like this. And I was like, yeah, I know what she's going to ask me next. Can I... um?" Can I make a blanket with it? And I'm like, I knew you were going to ask that. So, of course, I said yes. And we spent quite a few moments, um, you know, sort of discussing it. And to be honest, she did all the talking. She said, yeah, I'll, I'll choose some colours and I've got a stitch in mind. And yeah, so off she went. She chose 15 colours. There's a list on the website of the 15 colours. So do follow the link in the description box below with the 15 colors. There's also a table of the colors that she used. So make sure you go and get that table as well. And now here I am going to explain to you the stitch. And I'm also going to show you how to do the border. Yes, she came up with a lovely border and I think it's so effective. Now, the way she's offset the colours, well, how should I say it? She hasn't offset the colours, but she's offset the halves of the shells here. And that way it looks as if it's a chevron. Look at that. I just thought it was a great effect. Karen had a great idea of using this stitch, of playing with the colours and while she was making it, she was just absolutely loving it. So I have to say, yeah, I mean, I haven't got the time to make this blanket for myself. Obviously, I'm going to give this to Karen, you know, back to her. I would have loved to have made this blanket as well because the stitch, in a way, it works really well. It works up well and it, can, you know, it's easy to crochet. The colours she's chosen are just so wonderful. And because it's such a bright and wonderful blanket, we have called it Carnival. So it's Karen's Carnival blanket and I am going to show you how to make it. So I hope you like the blanket. I hope you like the idea that Karen has designed this blanket for us. And yeah, I'll be showing you how to make it and all the information that you need to be able to reproduce this blanket is on our website. So you will need 15 colours of Starcraft Special Aran and the link is in the description box which will take you to the list of the colours. So this is the Starcraft Special Aran and the yarn is a little bit thicker than the DK that we usually use and it is prescribed for a 5mm hook. So I am going to be using a 5mm because I don't want my fabric to be too tight. I want it to have a little bit of a drape so that's why I'm using a 5. So there is a list on our website which has all the colours that Karen used, plus also a table of her colour choices for the whole of the blanket. So it's a really lovely blanket and I do hope you will want to make it. So we have a 5mm hook. Of course, you also are going to need your scissors and a darning needle. Real quick, before we continue, make sure you are subscribed to my channel, like my content and do go and have another look at all the videos that I have already published. I have more than a thousand videos on my channel and I do hope you will find some lovely projects to make. Thank you for being here and back to the video. This blanket has the size of an Ophelia Talks play blanket. That means it's one meter by one meter or 40 inches by 40 inches. 
So let me show you how to do the stitch for the blanket. Now, Karen chained 145. So that's a multiple of 8 plus 1. So today we are going to chain 41. Because, of course, that is also a multiple of 8 plus 1, but less repeats. So I have just made my slip knot here. So I'm going to start chaining. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 39 and 40. And this is 41. So I now have 41 chains. So for the big blanket, you should chain 145. Now for row one we are going to chain one. So this chain one we do not count in our starting chain because we are going to be doing it every row. So this is our turning chain. Okay so keep an eye on your last chain that you did in your starting chain. This one here is my turning chain and I'm going to disregard it, so I'm not going to pay any attention to it anymore. So now skipping the turning chain and into the last chain of our starter chain, I am going to place three double crochets. So this is the first one. So a double crochet is yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And a third one. Because really we're starting with half a shell. So now we are going to skip three chains. So make sure you count really well here. One, two and three. Then into the fourth chain you are going to do a single crochet. So insert, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the two loops on your hook. There we go. Okay, so now you can see that this is our side. Now we are going to skip three again. One, two and three. Then in the fourth chain, we are going to place five double crochets. So yarn over into that fourth chain. And we do our double crochets. Now we are getting started straight away on to the chain. So make sure your yarn is free flowing and that you don't bunch things up. We will, however, put something on this side of the chain when we do our border. One, two, three, four. So my fifth stitch will go in there as well. Okay. So also to be careful of is this chain now has extended. That means this one has become smaller. So don't forget to count it later on. Okay, because now we have to skip three. One, two, three, and a single crochet in the fourth stitch. There we go. So this is what we are looking like. And this is how we are going to continue. So. This is used one, two, three into the fourth one for five double crochets. And that's four, and this is five. Then skip three, one, two three and into the fourth one for a single crochet. And you repeat this same system one, two, three until you get to the end of your row. Now I hope you will be making this sampler along with me. It's really handy to get used to the thickness of the yarn, the thickness of the hook and of course the new stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, then one, two, three and a single crochet. Now of course in a moment I am already one, two, three, yeah, going to reach the end of my row here. But when you are doing the blanket you will be doing of course more repeats so in your 145 chains you will have 18 repeats 
on the other hand here in the sampler one two three four five yeah one see this one has gotten a little bit smaller one two three fourth one is that right or is this used see sometimes you really need to yeah that's not used one two three yeah there, there we go so sometimes you do need to just look lots closer to make sure that you're doing the right thing so here i am going to be doing five repeats now i've done four whole repeats and here is half a repeat and here i have just enough left one two three four chains left to do another half repeat and we are going to skip three and into the last one we are going to be placing three double crochets so we end our row the way we started with half a shell so this is the end of the row this is the beginning and so in between i have full shells now i have four full shells and two half ones which in essence is five shells but you will have on your 145 chains you will have 18 repeats so you will have 17 full shells and two half ones so this is row one of our blanket now this row is only done once because we have to get started onto our chain so from now on row two row three those are the two rows that we will keep on repeating so first of all let's change color there we go cut off this one and karen used wisteria for the next row so i am going to pull it through so i can start using it there we go okay so row two is chain one we turn and now we are going to do a single crochet in the first stitch there we go and a chain three one two and three now we're going to do a five double crochet together but we do it over five stitches so if you tip the work towards you you will see one two three four five those five stitches up to my fingers there are the ones that we will be using for our five double crochet together so we yarn over we insert into the first stitch we pull up a loop we yarn over we pull through two we don't pull through and finish because it's a together so we're going to keep this on our hook now we yarn over into the next stitch and we do the same thing yarn over into the next one that's the third one yarn over and into the next one for the fourth one yarn over into the next one for the fifth double crochet so now you have six loops on your hook you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through all the six loops and that is a five double crochet together over five stitches and of course we need that chain three to get to where this double crochet together is going to finish so now we also have to do a chain three one two and three and then here the next stitch here which is the middle double crochet of that shell below we place a single crochet see so we have inserted a half shell but you know the other way around in between these two shells here so now we're going to do the same thing chain three so now we are going to use the next five v's to do our next five double crochets together so yarn over insert pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and again in the next stitch again in the next stitch once more and once more for the fifth stitch so there we are six loops on our hook yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook and one two three and we place a single crochet in the next stitch 
And this is how you are going to continue using every V basically of your row below. Five, yep, there we go. And of course, for me now, I'm going to be making five of these because we don't have any half um, shells to do in this row. And of course, you don't have any half shells either. So you will be making 18 of these half. Well, I call them the shells facing down. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I thought Karen came up with a great way of using the colour and offsetting these shells to make it look like chevrons. It really made such a difference to the look of that blanket. So here we go. So I've done my last upside down shell. One, two, three. And then I'm going to do a single crochet in the last stitch. There we go. Voila. So we finished the way we started and we now have a straight edge. So now we are going to do row three and we keep the same color. So chain one, turn. And we are going to do three double crochets in the first stitch. There we go. And then we are going to do a single crochet on top of the shell here. So this V here, we're going to go under there and we do a single crochet. Now we are going to be going on from there and we see that there's a single crochet here and into this single crochet we are going to be placing five double crochets so go into the single crochet for your five double crochets so in this row really we are using one two three four five yeah so we are using the middle of that upside down shell and the single crochets. So here again, in the middle of the upside down shell for a single crochet, then this single crochet for five double crochets. Make sure I'm not doing too many. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Yes. And then here we have the location for our single crochet. So like I said, once you have the locations, you'll be off doing this, you know, quite easily. And look at how the colours play. I just love this. It's so sweet the way the colours intermingle now. And yeah, I really, really liked the way she, um, Karen came up with this design. She said she had the stitch in mind for a little while. And when she saw um, the new Aaron collection that I had at home, just to sort of look at it for a little while, uh, she was like, oh, Anya, I've got the perfect stitch. Can I try something out? And of course, yes, I mean... I didn't mind her trying something out. Did I do too many? Yes, I did. Uh, so she chose some colours and off she went. And first I didn't hear anything. And then it was, yes, I want to show you this because, you know, I, I'd been asking her and she's like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You know, I'll, I'll send you a picture. But she didn't. And then we met up and then she brought it. And oh, my goodness, I was really, really in awe. It was such a lovely, jolly blanket. Um, and the effect of the colours with this stitch, you know, sort of the the, the up and down, the waviness of the colours, just so lovely. I thought it was genius putting the stitches together like this. So there we go. So, um, yeah, one, two, three, yeah, five. Okay, I'm nearly at the end. 
I need to concentrate instead of talking, really. <laughs> so then here into the last stitch, we will be placing our three double crochets. There we go. And that was row two and three. So this now is going to be your repeat. So now you will be filling in with the upside down shells and then you will be coming back with the shells. So all your ends should be on one side. I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to get the pistachio. And of course, yeah, easy to change the colours by pulling them through. So there we go, I shall do that. And then same thing, chain one, turn, and we do a single crochet in the first one. And then we are going to do a chain three, and then our upside down shell. Well, that's what I'm calling it anyway. Four. And, or is that already five? No, that is four, five, there we go. And now you pull it through, and voila! One, two, and three. Single crochet in that top of the shell. There we go. So I thought I would do a few more repeats of the rows for you just to see how it all works out. So this is another row two and row three repeated. Okay, so that is a row two. Voila. So that is another repeat done. And I just love the way you see how the colors go like this. It's just fabulous. So when you are ready to finish your blanket, you have to make sure that your edge here is straight. So you have to finish in a row two. So let me do that and I will be back to show you how to do the border. So I have now finished my blanket or at least my sampler and I have made sure that I finished in a row two so we have a straight edge both on the base of the blanket and on the top of the blanket and of course on the sides as well. So we need to um, unfortunately sew in the ends here but before I do that, I'm going to cut off my yarn here. Now, Karen has used the silver um, to, first of all, go around the whole blanket in single crochet. But I am going to use um, pistachio because I just want to make sure you can see the difference. You can see where to put the stitches. OK, so just for um, demonstration purposes, I'm doing that. So if you do want to follow the same colors, make sure you do it in the colors that are in the table. OK, so let me sew in the ends and I will be back to show you how to do the border. So I now have sewn in all my ends and I'm going to be using pistachio for my first round of the border. And I'm going to be starting where you would have been if you had just gone on with the, um, the silver. So I'll just pull it through here. There we go. OK, so now we are at the corner, but straight away we're going to do a chain and put a single crochet around there. And then on the side here, you're just going to have to gauge it and place your single crochets at a regular interval, making sure you don't put too many, but not too few, like I always say, making a nice edge to your side of the blanket there, but making sure also it doesn't bunch up. Then when we get to the corner here, we're going to place one single crochet, a chain and one single crochet. Let's see if that is enough to create our corner. And then we start adding single crochets to the chain and a single crochet also into that chain where the double crochets are. So let me just show you. 
There we go. So two around the chain space, one into where the single crochet is. And then here, one into where the double crochets are. And I think this corner is okay for now. We'll add more rounds, so that should be fine. So now that I'm nearly at the end of the round, I still needed to do a corner here. Just do one more stitch, a chain, and then do a slip stitch here, and that will be my corner. There we go. And then Karen did another two rounds in half double crochets, so I will be doing those as well. So chain up and then use your Vs to do your half double crochets. So go into the chain space of the corner and do two half double crochets, a chain and two half double crochets. And that way we have now established our corner and then we move on to the side. So I will see you at the end of the round. So I've nearly made it all the way around. Here I just have to do that corner one. Um, so two half double crochets, a chain. And then here I'm going to treat this sort of as my second half double crochet of my corner. So just the one half double crochet and then slip stitch. Yeah, that's fine. Look, that makes a nice corner. I'm loving this. So let me do a second round of half double crochets. So chain one and a half double crochet in each stitch around. And the corners are made up of two half double crochets, one chain and two half double crochets. Just finishing the last corner here, so two half double crochets, a chain and two half double crochets. And I am doing my second one here because it needs it because now I'm a little bit further on. So here I will go under this V here and I will do my slip stitch. There we go. So that has finished my second round of half double crochets. I'm now going to cut off this colour and now yes I am going to stay in my little colourway because I am really loving my little sampler that I made here. So I am going to stick with my colours but make sure if you are doing um, the blanket that you use Karen's colour if you want to of course. So in Wisteria we are going to do a single crochet round and we are going to create the spikes. So best to start in the corner so you know where you are. Okay so I've made my slip knot into the corner for a single crochet, another single crochet, a chain one and another two single crochets just so that we have our corner sorted. There we go. And then you're going to do two single crochets. Yeah, I've got it. So in the, that end there. And then we are going to do a spike single crochet. Now, there is obviously a repeat in this um, stitch that we're doing, but I wouldn't worry too much if it doesn't work out. Just do your best okay so we're going to do a single crochet but we're going to be placing it in the row below so you're going to go in here at the base of this half double crochet you pull up your loop and you do your single crochet then you continue with two more single crochets and then we do the same thing again so you go into here at the base of that half double crochet and then you do a single crochet and a single, and as you can see, I'm taking along my end here. So you look for that V here, then the stitch underneath, and then this hole here. You're going to go in there, pull it up all the way to the level where you're working, and you do your single crochet. There we go. And this is how you are going to continue. 
So now we are approaching the corner and I have to say I'm not going to place another spike here because it's bringing it too close to the corner. So I'm just going to continue with doing my single crochets all the way up to the corner. I'm going to do my corner, two single crochets, one chain and then two single crochets. If you feel that's too many, then just do one, one, one. But I think that's OK. And then you start again with your repeat of one single crochet, one single crochet. And then, no, again, that brings it too close. So how many did we do here? One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to do five as well. One, two, three, four and five. You just need to see how it works out. Let's see. Let's do one. And then look at it, that's too far. <laughs> I think, yeah, just take it back a bit. <laughs> there we go. Okay, just eye it. Um, there is, like I said, there is a multiple, but it's easy to sort it to make sure it looks... That's fine. See, that looks better. That's okay. This This is okay for me. Okay, so continue like this. I will continue my round and I will see you at the end here. Oh my goodness, look at this. How did that border with the spike single crochet change? It's just lovely. Oh my word, I am so happy I made this now. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to put my hot tea on there and a piece of cake, you know. <laughs> <laughs> put it on my desk <laughs> okay so I'm here yeah I had to do three single crochets there just doing my slip stitch to finish my round yeah I mean it might not be something that I came up with but now that I've made it and tried it out I really you know I want to keep this now <laughs> I want to keep the big blanket or even I want to make one but obviously yes I have not got time to make my own but I am really happy that I can have this um yeah and of course this will go back to Karen after I've shown all of you of course um so yes so one more round to do single crochet Karen has it in lime, as you can see. So she used uh, watermelon for the spike and now um, lime for the uh, last row. But I'm going to stay with my colour palette here, which I compiled of the first few rows of Karen's blanket. So I'm going to continue with pale rose. So yes, it's a single crochet in pale rose. And of course, for the blanket, it's in lime. So let's get started any way you want because we're just doing a single crochet in there for two single crochets, a chain and two single crochets. And now off we go doing a single crochet in each stitch around. And I will meet you at the end of the round. Just doing my last stitch here, skipping the standing one and going under the next stitch for a slip stitch. And that has closed up my round. Now, I have to say, yes, I have properly fallen in love with this blanket. Um, this stitch is just so glorious, offsetting the half moons or the half shells or whatever it's called, um, has made for such a lovely, lovely colour effect. Look at that. How bright and how fun is that? So, Thank you so very much for watching this tutorial. I hope you will make this blanket. Karen will be very pleased if you did. And I have to thank Karen for her lovely idea of using this stitch in this way and offsetting the colors so that it looks like a wavy effect.
So I hope you have enjoyed this collaboration and I hope you appreciate Karen's choice of colors and stitch as much as I do. So thank you very much for being here and I will see you in the next video. Bye.